So I want to thank you for, for coming today and I want to check in with you real quick. Is it okay if we use first names? Yeah. Okay. All right. And can you put your names? I'm Allison. Allison. Trevor. Trevor. And I'm Tracy. I'm Laura. All right. And can we get you the name of your children? Um, Roger. Roger. He's our 10 year old. Um, and Nakia is eight. <laughs>
And I'm sorry. I was just going to say, as we're going forward, you guys will have a chance to look at what kinds of plans for your family can meet your needs for order and predictability you're talking about and, and for, for um, accountability that you were discussing. Yeah, we got one this was most important. And again, and recognizing um, prioritize, prioritizing uh, Rogers and Nikki are important yeah. to this process. And in step five, when we find areas of agreement, when you find areas of agreement, um, Lorg and I can write those down and everyone can sign it and get a copy. And the, agree the agreement may be a binding contract. <coughs> Any questions about that at this point? I'm good. So just a little bit about the role that Tracy and I play. It's our job um, to be non-judgmental. And so what that means is that it's our job to work on understanding um, both of you and what both of you think is important for your children. And um, what we'll do is we'll ask questions to work on understanding, we'll check back in to see if we understand, um, and we'll run the brainstorming process. We won't be giving ideas or advice, and we won't take sides or deciding about who's right or who's wrong, or what kinds of outcomes you want to you walk away with. So that's the non judgmental piece. The second piece is that it's voluntary, and so you can choose, and you choose to be here, you can choose how long you want to stay, you can choose what you want to talk about, and what kind of outcomes you come up with, so you're not going to be forced to agree to anything that you're not okay with. Um, if it, uh, you can choose how long you want to stay in the process, if there's parts of the process that aren't working for you, um, let us know. Ultimately, you get to decide how long you want to stay, but you, there may be things that we can adjust about the process that can help make it work better for you. So that's the voluntary piece. And then the last piece is that it's confidential. And so, except for issues of child abuse, elder abuse, or credible threats of future violence, conversations that take place here, we maintain confidentiality with them, and we don't share them outside of this setting. Um, and then if the uh, issues that you're discussing were ever to go to court, um, the information that was gathered in this setting wouldn't be admissible in those court, uh, in a court trial. Does that make sense? Are there any questions regarding that? They explained it already, yeah. Well, uh, as it should be, and we just want to make sure everybody's on the same page before we get started. Now, did you want to talk about mediation in the courts, or did you want me to do that? Okay, so um, in mediation, it's your chance to come up with uh, what you both think is best for your children. So a lot of times, uh, issues of, um, of raising children, uh, custody, visitation, are involved in the court system. And so we just want to be clear that this is a place where you all get to decide what you want to do, regardless of what the court may have decided in the past about your situation or about anyone else's situation. So you're not restricted by any kind of court decisions or court precedents. It's your chance to come up with what's, what you think is best for your children. I mean, we, we're, we're not there yet, but as far as the whole court thing, but if she keeps having this idea like she's got stuck in her head that she's going to get all the things that she wants, and then it, it's going to go there. And, and I hate to do it, but that's what's going to happen. Because, you know, she you just know, thinks everything is want. Good. I'm just trying to do what's best for Roger and so, so am I, I don't think that's best at all. So, here we are. So some of the conversations going forward, it sounds like, is a conversation about what is best for Roger and Nakia. And you're saying that one of the possibilities, depending on what happens here, is to go to court, and you're hoping yeah. to avoid that. Right. And, and you're open to it, if that's. If that's I mean, if that's what has to happen, then that, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so um, the other thing I just wanted to mention about courts is ultimately, again, because custody visitation sometimes are tied to court, if you did want the agreement that you come up with in mediation to be enforced by the courts, it has to be presented to them. And when we get to step five, we can talk more about that, but we just like folks to know that in advance so that if you come to an agreement um, that you would expect the courts to enforce, um, that you, know, you have to take it there for that to happen. So, um, questions about any of that? Okay. So, um, again, this is a process that will focus on um, Roger and Nakia, and uh, there may be some other issues that come up besides them, and we'll be consistently asking, you know, when other things come up, how it does affect them directly, okay? Um, also, the pads there are for your use, and I just want to cover a couple of housekeeping things. The restrooms are through that door to the right. And um, if, if we need to take a break for a smoking or for bathroom breaks, we'll all take a break at the same time. And I just want to check is um, to make sure everyone can turn off their cell phones or put it on vibrate at least. And 
sure Barbara will be texting me on my shot. Um, the, so, um, and we, again, we're scheduled for two hours and we want to make sure that we're still okay. We're scheduled to go till nine. Does that still work? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm willing to do, to be here as long as we need to be, to be here the best for the And the court generally uh, refers, mm -hmm. that's not important. Oh. Although, if you end up going to court, just so you know, they almost always start another. So, I'm just saying, it's, we'll to, it's in your own best yeah, interest right. to work it out here. Okay. okay. So, right. we'll so, so, so it sounds like you're, um, hopeful about the opportunities that mediation will provide and, and confident of, about Yeah, I mean, if I don't have to wait for an attorney, then great, but. And looking for this to be resolved in, in a cost-effective way. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, I missed what you said. She's talking about spending money on attorney. She's not going to Now that I'm out of the picture, good luck. Okay. So, so financial questions maybe going forward, you'll have a chance to discuss those as well. well. Appreciate it. As a mother, you're trying to Okay, why you shouldn't have full custody. <laughs> Okay, so Sorry. we talked about time. Any other questions about the process? Um, we have one more piece of paperwork and then um, interested in hearing more about why the media. If you don't have any other questions about the process, I'm just going to give you this consent to mediate form and I'm going to read it out loud because uh, that's what we do before we ask folks to sign stuff. It says blah, 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 blah. To, uh, and so basically signing it right now um, means that uh, you understand the process and you want to get started. So we, Good. Thanks. We can get you happy with you on your way out. Okay. So, uh, yes. Yeah, we can yes. So, uh, we're shifting into uh, finding out about the family and creating a little bit of context. Um, and so, you mentioned that uh, both of you talked about the fact that you are not currently involved in the court system um, and that you're open to the fact that that might be possible place that this could get resolved. Um, I just want to know a little bit about the context. How did you get connected with the mediation program? Um, Roger's uh, principal, I know she had a brochure in her office when I was there. So. Okay. Roger's principal. Okay. No, that, I didn't, I mean, she filled me in and asked me and that, that I said that was fine. I didn't know how she got it, so. Okay, so some new information. So, um, and are there any other organizations, Rogers Principal, or any other agency that's waiting for any kind of outcome? I heard you say that you were anxious to get some decisions soon, but are there any other people who aren't here who have any kind of deadlines that affect um, the conversation? There is, there is one person um, that I'm involved with that might have some influence on what, what the kids will have, uh, or what the, what the kids' time is going to be like when they're with me. But um, I mean, I, as far as decisions we need to make, we're the only ones involved. I just want I mean, you're asking if there's going to be other people around there should be in their lives, too. So, so one of the things you're going to talk about is the role she's going to play in the lives. And part of what I was trying to understand is if there's any other deadlines, either oh, no, by other no. people or courts or mm -hmm. anybody else. Okay. So the time frame is, is really one that you all get to be in charge of. Right. Okay. And are there any other agencies that you know of that are waiting for any decisions? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So uh, we can start talking about the children. Do you want to ask any questions? Mm -hmm. So now that we've gotten through some, um, a lot of the formal stuff, we want to learn more about the children and the family. So can you, do you have, um, can you give us a picture of what uh, Roger and Nakia's lives are like? And if you have any pictures that you'd like to share this with Yeah, people. actually, I brought, uh, these are their school pictures from last year. Um, so Roger is 10 and Nakia is 8. And um, Roger, he's a really, he's a really sweet kid. Um, some of his friends, not so much. You know, Ted is kind of a touchy age sometimes, but he's really sweet. He's um he's into football and he's into basketball. He's a great, great athlete. Yeah. I mean, he's just phenomenal. Yeah, he kind of takes after his dad. Yeah. That, so. Yeah. So I mean, and we're, he we're, has, he, he's a, he does good in school too. You know, he's smart. Um, I mean, lately there have been a few a few problems, but you know, overall, he definitely um he definitely does well in school. He's a good kid. So. Yeah, well, I mean, they both they both do great um, in school, and uh, I don't know. I, I have some sort of like concern about why you're even in the principal's office in the first place. But well, it was she called me. I mean, it, you probably didn't just go to his principal to find out where mediation was. 
Well, you know, what? he was acting up. I mean, she class. always did. She always did like this kind of sneaky bullshit while we were together. And that's it's not sneaky. Why we're it's separated, taking care so, of what I mean, needs to be taken care of. Yeah, well, and if you were there more often, maybe you would have been included in these things. I mean, and I was there as much as I could, but you, but you know, that's you bullshit. I don't have any, any, any kind of information about the principal contacting me. Well, and I have my phone on me all the time for work, and okay. I check my email 300 times a day. Feels like. So, I don't know. So sounds like you. Yeah. Oh, that's your problem. So sounds like um, you both feeling impressed by um, by Rogers' athleticism, <coughs> his academics, and um, and. The one that can't, can't play soccer too. She's a good athlete. Okay. She's All right. And, uh, and I'm also impressed by the key and yeah. her athleticism as well. And, and you mentioned both of them doing well in school. Mm -hmm. As far and, as I know. And, um, and Trevor, it sounds like you're feeling left out around communication with regards to Roger and the mm -hmm. key. And we're looking for some direct communication, particularly around education. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to be as much as I can in their lives. Um, and, you know, stuff's been kind of shaky because of what's going on with us. We're both, I mean, I'm trying my best to be in their lives, but um, I have to work a lot too. So, I mean, I do my best to try to balance right. that. But if, if, would buy if, Barbie all of her shoes and clothes. Of course you have to work a lot. Would you just leave, leave that out? I mean, that has nothing to do with this except the fact that she is a great person to them. They like her. She does as much as she can for them. Of course they like her. She's closer to their age than yours. She's very relatable. You have no idea. You now. I don't know, that's not even your business, so just, just stay out. Right, so a major <coughs> adult in my children's lives, none of my business. Right, and their mother. So it sounds like collaborative decision making around the people involved in, in, in Roger and Nikia's not just lives. It's something that's important to you, is that correct? Yeah, as long as she's not one of the people collaborating. She has okay. nothing to say about my children. Okay, and have some specific ideas about how that, that collaboration will happen, is yeah. that right? And, she um, can do whatever. I mean, she, it's like not like she tries to take on this role and replace her or anything. So I don't oh, know if like, there's she's like some jealousy going on there or something like that. But she's thirty years old. I don't. I don't know she's where you're not, getting this she's idea. She's three years old. No, she's not. So an appropriate division of roles around parent parental roles is important to you. She knows her boundaries, but she's also in the kids' lives quite often. She she loves providing for. Them. I mean, she, yeah. So. Yeah, she and the kids wear the same clothes. <clears throat> And I wanted to check in with you again around the um, the activities that Roger and Nakia are involved in, and also the people in their lives. So um, Nakia, she she does play soccer, so she's athletic, and she's um, she's she's definitely a girly girl too. She mm -hmm. loves to um, play dress up, and we have um, in the room we have this whole like trunk of like dress up clothes, like princess dresses. No, you should have the stuff that the girl, the the lady that I'm dating, she. She love, they get along great because Nikki does like all that dress up and makeup stuff and, and they just they do that great together. So, okay. But okay, this, so there's a difference between like dress up like Cinderella and dress up like a skank core. Like let's be let's be totally clear here, okay? You want to like, talk about dress up? You want to talk like about dress skate? up like, you know, kid like creative imagination, like let's, you know, put on a play, let's dress up. She's eight, she, she, she can have her freedom of expression however she wants. I mean, I'm not gonna let her go out of the house looking like a whore, but I mean she can do her shoes, my god. Talking, you mentioned the whole skank thing. She came, she came to me the other day and said something about mommy. Said that I'm living with a skank now. What is that shit? So that She's concerns me about what the kind of stuff you're telling the kids. It's ridiculous. So it sounds like you, uh, in terms of Nakia, it sounds like one of the things that excites both of you about Nakia is her, um, the way she likes to, to play acts and dress up and um, and free the imagination <coughs> is really important. I think she's never featured in the theater. She's a really good. Huh. So, what? What so, so the the theater piece and then the opportunities that that creates yeah. really exciting. Yeah. Um, and Trevor, it sounds like you're saying that you appreciate that connection between um, Nakia and what's the woman's name? Um, her name is uh, Jen. Jen. Between Nakia Jenna. and uh, Jenna. Uh, <clears throat> appreciate great. the connection between Nakia um, and, and Jenna. Right. Um, and Allison, it sounds like you're worried about the connection between Nakia and Jenna when they yeah. when they get dressed up together. And it sounds like clothing, maybe as we're going forward, is one of the topics that you guys are going to want to make a make a plan about. When we... And it's and it's not just clothing. It's it's that whole it's that whole attitude. That whole women. You Listen, know, this women isn't toddlers and tiaras. Okay, you know? she's not like putting. She's not doing that kind of shit. They just get along, <laughs> and she you know helps her out with she however she wants to dress and her makeup and her expression stuff. Just because. Oh, Jenna gave this to me. That's 
That's so inappropriate. She's eight years old. Kids oh, so is that, is that when you, is that when you call her the scam? Is that when you call her the scam? You know what? This is, this is exactly why all this shit ended with this. I mean, maybe if we didn't draw a dress like Mother Teresa, we probably wouldn't have got separated in the first place. You're just jealous. Jealous of who? Jealous of Bimbo Barbie? Jesus. Stop calling her Bimbo Barbie. It's bullshit. She has a weight class here. Trevor, it sounds like. Sounds like you're saying that um, this conversation feels familiar to you, and it feels like the reason that the relationship itself ended, um, yeah. and that you were shocked when um, Nakia made the comment about um, about Jenna. And it sounds like um, you were looking for some boundaries and what kind of language is used with the children. And right. So, this communication yeah. with the children might be one of the topics. That Definitely, you're I mean, about. she can't. I mean, they can't come and act like they. They're blaming me for everything that's going on with us because probably all the shit that she's done. So there's this question about how, how to talk to the children about the, the situation, and you're feeling blamed and accused of what's happening right now. Exactly. I mean, she can talk to me however she wants. She's not going to upset me. That's fine. I mean, we're, it, this is over with. I mean, it's right. Clearly, really nothing I say registers with you. Yeah, you just don't give a shit. So, so I, so, I really don't anymore. So I just want to get the stuff public. done here. And so now it sounds like you're feeling ignored. And I'm looking for an opportunity. Having communication that um, allows your input is important to you. Is that correct? Yeah, because, I mean, we're not together. And God knows we're not getting back together. But, you know, I'm still the mother of your children. You shouldn't treat me like like dirt. I th where do you get this idea from? So, I don't understand how you want me to give you any kind of respect when you don't show me any at all. So, so, so looking for mutual respect, is that right? Yeah. I mean, she's sitting here calling my, my girlfriend Bimbo Barbie and shit, and then she wants me to treat her with respect because she's the mother of my kids. I, it's a two-way street. So, so is that about feeling insulted with how communication is happening right. at the table? All the time. All the time. When she does decide to talk to me, I mean, obviously she doesn't share everything with me, and that's a whole another game. And, and Allison, it sounds like, um, wanting res communication to happen in a way that reflects respect is important to you as yeah. well. So part of what we're doing is uh, we're starting to hear where it is that you may want to go with this conversation as we move into step three in terms of school, in terms of communication with the children, in terms of communication with each other, in terms of clothing, and some of the topics you guys might make a plan about. Um, before we go much more into that. We just want to have more of a picture of the children and what they're like. And so you both talked about feeling really excited by the sports. You, you talked about um, feeling hopeful about the opportunity that might be in theater for, for Nakia. Um, talked about feeling a real, real connection to her around that. You mentioned that the gentleman that you upset She loves her you were talking about the, that in general they're doing well in school, and what yeah. else? What about friends or activities or family members, well, your family? Who else is in their lives? Just give us a sense of their lives, I guess. That's kind of what we're trying to picture. I mean, they're both good kids. They, they stay out of trouble, as, as far as I know, um, and they just stay with their, their sport teams a lot. And, um, and like I said, uh, Nakia's been getting along real well uh, with Jenna, and uh, Roger's been, you know, doing great in football and everything. They all have a great social life and stuff. But the Nikita's definitely been really affected by what's going on here. There's no yeah, doubt. Yeah, I mean, she's and I think maybe that's why she's like substituting all this, like you know, letting you look like a princess stuff because she's really uh, sad inside or something. I don't know what it is. But, don't think that's I mean, the reason, but we tried for so long to kind of keep this clusterfuck together, so to speak, of a relationship, and we just both, we both, you knew it was. I mean, I'm the only one who had the balls to end the relationship, or else we wouldn't even be sitting here and we'd probably both still be miserable, but I'm completely happy. Yeah, I just want to make sure the kids are okay. Sleeping with that whore. Okay, sure. And, uh, and I'm sure you uh, you have quite a bit of friends yourself. Do not. As I always suspect. I'm very careful what I roll on with my children. Yeah, right. Well, they don't, they're not always and there. That's, you know, that's what pisses me off, is that I don't, like, this woman, you say she's 30, and I, I thought she was younger, so fine. But that's even, she should know better than to dress like that and to act like that and to look like that. I don't know what you're talking about. She's a school teacher. Well, she's not some tramp. She's I don't not know standing what she's on the corner. Those kids then. So, so, Allison, it sounds like um, age appropriate role modeling and age appropriate yeah. clothing is something that's important to you with regards to, the, to what Nikia experiences. Is that correct? Yeah, because the way someone dresses and, and looks, I mean, it's. Not to be shut, but you know, it, it says a lot about how you think about yourself, you know? And so if this woman is dressing like some sort of hooker on the corner, I don't want her being a role model to my daughter. 
So just because she doesn't leave the house every day in a sweater and jeans doesn't mean she's a hooker. So, so there's this question about, sounds like you're saying that the, in terms of um, what's important to you uh, for Nakia is a, the self-image and the message that she's getting Absolutely. about clothing and about herself and how that reflects on herself. Yeah, because I want her to know that she's important and she's special because of her brains and her you know, she can sing, she has a lot of imagination, a lot of creativity, she's a really sweet girl. You know, I want her to sort of feel valued as like a whole person because like, you know, the media and everywhere you go, you see, you know, scantily clad women being objectified and it's disgusting and I don't want that over her. I mean, I'm not gonna disagree with I you. I mean, those are the kind of girls that, that end up with like eating disorders and self-image problems and you know, it's just, I don't, I don't want that. She's problem. also not gonna be like sheltered and you know, she's not, you know? I mean, I agree with you on, on most of the stuff you're saying, but you're like trying to keep them away from everything. I mean, she can have some sort of self-expression. So, so, other than theater. So, so Austin sounds like a film worried about the images that 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 Nakia takes in, yeah. and it's important to you that you uh, she feels well rounded and and self-assured as a person, as an adult. Is that correct? Yeah, because that, that self-esteem I think is really important. And 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 Trevor, for you, it sounds like also. Um, uh, feeling in agreement with a lot of what you've heard about um, about images of, of women, and, and also wanting to make sure that she has a, a full experience as she, as she grows up. And and you talked about sheltering. Can you, can you say more about that? Yeah, I mean, she is eight years old, and I understand there needs to be a lot of supervision and whatnot, and she needs to you know be doing certain things and wearing certain things that are appropriate and everything, and watching and all the media influence like needs to be somewhat filtered and, and everything. Like she's saying, and I don't want her to grow up and be some, you know, piece of eye candy and stuff like that. But she also has every right to her self-expression, and she, hey, you know, you if she to wants to play dress up or whatever, or put some makeup or whatever. Like it's fine. She's not hurting anyone, and it's not hurting me. So I just don't understand why you, why you don't understand that. He doesn't get it. He's a guy. Like you all get it, right? Like all the images women are regarded with, all the expectations. It, he doesn't. So well, we're working on understanding what's important to both of you, and I just I want to check in here and then see if we see if we do get it get it for you as well, Allison. So, so Trevor, you were saying it sounds like you're saying that there's this balance. You're looking for this balance, a balance that's about um, raising Nikia um, in a way that protects um, her self-image and also freedom and a connection to the reality of, of how the world works. Right. Exactly. About balancing those two pieces. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, and Allison, it sounds like. It sounds like you're saying that um, you're terrified about the implications yeah. Yeah. for Nakia um, if she grows up with a certain kind of self-image, and you mentioned health implications and um, and personality and emotional uh, implications, yeah. uh, depending on how uh, how she sort of processes her. her yeah, she's your years. So. Okay. I mean, but they're they're good kids, and you know the, the last thing I want to happen, regardless of all all this like. Um, the, the clothing and all that stuff, like I just want to make sure that they continue on that path and the shit that we have going on here doesn't affect them. I mean, that's what I, I'm I don't about. want to keep them from seeing I mean, and, Trevor. And, and, and I haven't even mentioned all the shit that has just gone on in the last couple months. I mean, ever since she, you know, she's talking about Pimbo and Barbie and all that shit, my, my girlfriend, ever since she's been in the picture, no, kids can't be around daddy anymore. I mean, it's They can. It's you really have dinner with them like two yeah, three dinner. times a week. You would think they could maybe stay over at my house like once in a while, um, um, during the week, like one night, she's, she's not doing Jenna. anything to harm them. Like I said, she knows her boundaries. She's not going to step in and act like she's one some, their mother figure all of a sudden and badmouth you like you do her and like you do me. I just don't trust that things are going to go the way they need to go in the kids' lives when they're at your house for longer than a few hours. I understand that. We live 10 minutes away. Anything. If there was anything that was that bad, you could be there in a heart heartbeat. It's ridiculous. And I mean, I used to have them on the weekends. I used to have them on the weekends. And then she found out that Jenna was in my life, and then now she's just trying to cut all that off. And so I just don't on Halloween. And I thought, okay, they can go trick or treating with their dad. That's something they've always done with their dad. They really enjoy it. I mean, for all I know, Jenna was still trick or treating at that point. And so I thought it'd be a nice thing for them all to do together. Um, and they came home the next day, and they were sick all day long because he let them eat as much candy as they wanted. They had pizza for dinner. They'd gone to like IHOP or something for What's breakfast. What's wrong with IHOP? Oh, I hop, then pizza, then candy. That stuff no, is not all in the you same know, day. It's not like they, kind of food. It's not like oh they crush their whole bag of candy in one night. I don't understand. A Tootsie Roll and a bag of Skittles isn't going to kill someone. If they had 
and, the, and the pancakes at IHOP are damn good, and, and they both love them, so, I mean. Uh, right, you should just let kids eat whatever they want. They're really good at No one said that. Diabetes. They don't eat whatever they want. They eat when we all go to eat because it's the only thing you let me do with them, and I'm there right with them. So if they want to order all this junk and shit, obviously I'm going to tell them that's probably not the best idea, so I'm going to get them something. It's not like they just go raid the pantry and shit. They're not even there during the day to be able to do that. They used to be, and it's got a lock on it. So it sounds like, um, in terms of food, uh, Allison, it sounds like you're saying that you felt disgusted um, about the food that, that they had eaten around that time, around the yeah. Halloween, that, that, that I mean, it made them physically ill. I'm so you worried know. about, you said you had some Would you take them to the doctor and they diagnosed Halloween? No, I was going to hold in your head back while they threw up all day. Jesus, that is so true. So you felt burdened, something felt burdened oh, also by their illness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they get to go ahead and Dad, and the only candy they want, and then they come home. Yeah, so let them eat the apple. Like they can use them in the Halloween mm -hmm. bag. Is that okay with you? That's probably good. So the popcorn ball, you know, anything but candy. And Trevor, it sounds like you're saying that you feel um, misunderstood and um, and judged and somewhat limited in terms of what yeah. relationship you can have with oh. each other. It ends up being really limited around a couple of meals. Um, yeah, how's that fair? I mean, I'm sure you have kids, and if somebody just went in because you started dating someone else and just took them away, or whatever, held them back from you and didn't let you see them, but a couple, of them, one or two, maybe, nice to go eat. I mean, so it's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I have mean, not done a single thing. But she is fucking my ex-husband qualifies her to discipline my children, to decide what they yeah, eat, it's to much show better them, to role model what they should wear and how they should act. I mean, really? Really? Is that? No. No, I'm sorry, I don't trust them. I mean, there are reasons why. There are more reasons why we, you know, cut off what we did, and that might be one of them. And I'm completely happy right now. So, so for you. So, so Allison, sounds like for you with adult supervision in regards to how food is is decided. <coughs> right. And yeah. and and also again coming back to this idea of, of role modeling and whose whose role, what the roles are. In terms of decision making in um, the Key and Rogers' life, is something that you want to talk about in mediation? Is that correct? Yeah, I don't, I don't want her to be making decisions. I don't. Agree. You, but you just don't understand that she's not like she's going to be in my life and she's going to be in their life regardless. So you're just going to have to get over that, and we're going to work out some kind of thing other than what the hell's going on right now, because there's no way you're going to keep me from seeing my kids one night a week for dinner. So, they can't just say that. You're looking for a level of acceptance, and when we get to step four. Um, the ideas around, you know, just accept that she's going to be in my life, that idea, any other ideas that you all want to explore, you're going to have a chance to explore those. And we're kind of moving in that direction. You're giving us a decent picture of some of the things that you want to make plans about in terms of discipline, food, clothing, communication, a schedule. You talked about a schedule being something that you want to discuss. Um, and just before we kind of shift to the making a formal list of topics, although it's been like we're starting to go there. I um, just want to see if you wanted to tell us anything else about Roger and Nakia and other people in their family who are important to them. Well, they're both um, they're both close with my parents. My parents live about, um, I guess, about two hours away. Um, and so at least once a month, they go and spend a night with Nanny and Papa. So they love doing that. Um, that's really fun for them. So. And are there like, aunts or uncles or other folks in, in their lives that are? Yeah, I have, I have a brother. Where they call him? Um, it's Jeff. They call him Jeff. Well, I'm Jeff. They call him Jeff. And you mentioned Aunt Bev. Yeah. I thought I should marry the other brother. <laughs> what? You're fucking weird. So, some regret about some decisions that got made. That's disgusting. I don't know. What? And, and Trevor's sh feeling We're shy. We're twins! Feeling shy. <laughs> what are you? Disgusting. That's, that's basically, yeah. Uh, I think we've gone enough into their personal life. I mean, we can talk about them for hours from here. So. Yeah. Okay. We talk about them for hours. I can't see them, though, from here to six. Okay. So, so like you mentioned the schedule is one of the things. So let's take a look at this. This is um, what I want to do with this. I well, just want to explain um, that you mentioned the terms custody and visitation earlier. So I just want to explain how mediation works uh, as it relates to those terms. 
So the troops custody visitation, they come out of the court system. Um, actually, the penal system, where you take a prisoner into custody, a lot of visitors. Um, and uh, what we find is helpful is uh, we use sort of the more child-centered um, language, a more specific language. We try to um, be real specific so that you all have an understanding of what the plan is. Um, later, if you need to translate it back into court-based language, custody visitation, we can talk about that in step four. Um, but what you have here in front of you is basically custody is about how uh, real important decisions be made for our children. And so you can see there's this whole section on decision making and we've broken it down decision making process, major decisions, day to day emergency, child care, children's activities and events, clothing, communication with each other, communication with children, yeah, discipline plans, yeah, and clothing, clothing, clothing with children. With children. Yeah. Education, school records, entertainment, <clears throat> equipment and toys, extended family members, health and medical, higher education, information exchange about children, life insurance, meals and food, medical and dental insurance and costs, other people's spiritual guidance, transportation, and future dispute resolution. So that's sort of the, cuts, the, the part of the custody section. The other thing that custody is about is where do children live and go to school. And so you see there's this section of living arrangements, housing, and future relocation. Then there's visitation, and again, we usually use the term visitation, we talk about how do children spend time with mom, with dad, with other people who are important in their lives. And so there's this time sharing section, schedule, normal weeks and weekends, holidays and birthdays, school vacation periods, family trips. Um, and so, um, so we've sort of broken down custody limitation into this kind of more specific language. And generally we uh, use this and anything else that you want to talk about to create an agenda for what do you want to make a plan about today. So that's about some more on that list. And we need to talk about the four. Just you drop it. So what do you mean by four when you're looking for on this list in terms of as it relates to the children? I, yeah, because I refer to myself in the third person and in the first person. No, I'm referring to gender. I'm referring to Jenna. Is She's left with a married man. What well, do you call her? She's a whore. Oh, so it sounds like you feel betrayed. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, That's really great. That's really great. So, You're so fast. Whatever. So, so Elsa, it sounds like you're saying that you feel betrayed about the way the, the married man. Yeah, you couldn't wait until you moved out? God. Sure, but it sounds like you um, <coughs> Maybe if you had spent that time with your family and with me, trying to fix things, trying to at least do something so that it wouldn't be so hard on the kids when you abruptly moved out. You know, maybe things would be different. I was actually, I was actually on business when it happened anyway, so. On business? I, been, I was on a business trip when it happened anyway, so. Oh yeah, you're, you and your business trips, they can be, every time we were having a tough time, every time shit went down, oh, I have a business trip, I have to be away, whatever, not even. So, um, so it sounds like you're saying you felt betrayed about, about how, the relationship ended, and I'm hearing yeah. that, that you were disappointed, um, and you would have wanted Trevor to have spent more time with the family. Yeah. And Trevor, I'm hearing. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of why things fell fell apart. So you had a sense of they, what they led to that. Already fell apart. You know Where that. are you getting that? Because just, you just you, you gave up. You were you miserable. Up. You were miserable. Yeah, because you were never there when I needed you. And Trevor, when you were there, you were doing things you wanted to do. You weren't doing things that with needed the to get done. I mean, somebody's got to. Somebody's got to go to their games. Somebody's got to. Yes, do you get to do all the fun stuff. stuff with the kids, and then I get to be the bad cop. Oh, if they're sick, who's taking care of them? Oh, that would be mom. Oh, but you okay, know. Okay, because Dad gave them all the hot weekend, right? Trevor, you talked about um, feeling really um, excited about having the relationship with Jenna, and all, and um, and you talked about having the courage to have left the marriage and feeling really satisfied with that decision. Oh, courage! Is that what that was? Um, and so I'm just wondering, as you're talking about, about the way the marriage ended, um, can you help us understand how that relates to the decisions that you're making today about the children? I mean, I just, because, I mean, so much shit that's going on in all of our lives has been affected by the last 10 months or whatever. Yeah. And so, I mean, the way that stuff ended with us, the kids. That definitely affects them. I mean, they're not handling it too well, especially the uh, Yeah, it's really good. So, I don't know, I mean, she won't let go of it. She obviously just can't get over the fact that, you know, I'm dating someone else and she thinks I, you know, did whatever in the last couple months that we were together, which may or may not be true. Um, and so, I don't know, until she can get over all that stuff, then I don't know what her deal is. She's just gonna have all this just anger built up towards me and she's gonna wanna keep me away or keep me away. So, 
Trevor, it sounds like you're saying that you're worried that um, Allison's anger about how the relationship ended um, is affecting the decisions about the time the children's that children started. Oh, that definitely. Right? And because I have a, girl, a girlfriend in my life, that's affecting it too because she can't, you know, get over that and she wants to keep them as much away from her as she can. So in terms of the schedule, it sounds like part of what you're looking for is an acceptance of how things ended and a focus on the future in terms of the sure. decision making. It has to happen like that for anything. Yeah. Yes, he would like for all of us to forget that everything bad he's ever done and just start with a clean slate, like he's been the perfect father. And like I can totally trust this random woman. Yes, yeah, so that is what you would like to happen. So so Allison, it sounds like you're you feeling you feeling outraged. Yeah. And and it also sounded like earlier you were talking about in terms of how decision making has happened, that you were feeling villainized. Is that right? And and um and I want to plan about decision making with regards to Roger and Nakia that allows you to feel trust. Yeah, I need I need to know that the decisions that are being made are in their best interest at all times. Just trying to think of what. So making sure that decision making prioritizes Roger and Nakia's yeah. needs. I apologize, Jeff. Right? I mean, no, I mean you mentioned this thing about feeling villainized. And whatever. I'm just trying to think of what the best villain she probably represents, but that's not necessarily the case. So, so it sounded like kind of where we were with with that piece. Um, you're saying that there's, um, if I understood, you were saying that um, one of your concerns is about how discipline is happening and who uh, who is disciplining yeah. children. And you had talked about the importance of the parental role in that. Process. Yeah, because so, I mean, even even though Trevor and I clearly cannot stand each other right now, he has been their father since they were born. So he does, you know, I don't think he's gonna make stupid decisions, and you know, he, he does. He's a good father in a lot of ways, but I don't trust her. So I just, I, yeah, I, I don't want her disappointing the kids. She's not. I told you, she's not. She knows her boundaries. She's like just she there to try to keep them away from us, basically. And the bullshit that we're going through. She's not acting like she's some mother figure for them. I mean, years down the road, when she's more in their life and stuff, it might come to that point. She's never going to take your place. I don't know why you think like that's going to happen. I just don't think she's going to be when they're, when they're with me, I just put them out my girlfriend, not Jen. Let's just be clear about that. So it sounds like you already have some strategies right now, Trevor, around discipline mm -hmm. that you feel confident about. Yeah. And um and, and what in recognition for how discipline is happening currently and who's involved in discipline? She's painting this picture like that it's not accurate at all. Yeah. So is that about feeling misrepresented or misunderstood? Yeah, I, she just doesn't get it. And, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know what it's going to take for her to get it. But until she understands like what's going on when I do have the kids, then you know she's never going to trust it. I'm happy for you. Have the kids. So it sounds like you're looking. It sounds like you're looking for trust and understanding about how discipline happens in your home. Right. Is that right? Right. Um, and, and Allison, you were saying that um, highlighting parental roles and having boundaries were important in terms of how discipline happens. Yeah. Is that right? So, so does it make sense for us to, to highlight post-discipline as one of the things that you all might make a plan about? Yeah. Certainly. Mm -hmm. I mean, if she's going to cooperate. Now you had, and you if we're picking stuff, definitely. <coughs> okay, so let me let me make sure that we understand um, what's important to both of you about clothing. Um, you talked a little bit earlier about uh, self-image um, and the uh, sort of celebrating what's inside, talent and skills and brain. We talked a little bit about that. Um, can you say more about what what your goals are in terms of clothing? Yeah, I mean, I want her to be able to have fun with clothes. You know, I don't, I don't want her to be wearing like, you know, looking like a little Amish girl all the time or something. Like, you know, she can wear like fun colors and you know, skirts and dresses and whatever. And I, I don't know. I mean, I like shopping with her. It's fun, but um, I don't, I don't want her wearing revealing clothing. Everything clothing she that's gets not is from old baby. How can it be that bad? I don't understand. Would you? I don't Where's understand what you're talking you from. What? Because ah, seventy-five percent of her clothes are from old ladies, so I understand why you're saying. Yeah, seventy-five percent feeling... that I purchased in her. So this, it's a, it's about fun. I don't want her borrowing Jenna's clothes. But she said, "That's not happening at all." See, that's this is what I'm talking about. She just doesn't. She won't let go. She comes home with clothes in her suitcase that I do not. 
clothes in your suitcase. How are they going to have a suitcase? They don't even stay the night with me. Four. What are they going to a suitcase for dinner? So there's, um, so you were shocked with some of the clothes that came home in the suitcase. Um, and it sounds like, you're talking about the coverage of the clothing. Is that like modesty? Is that about modesty? Mm -hmm. Is that yeah, so modesty and, and just being like age perfect. She's only eight years old. Mm -hmm. um, and you had talked earlier about freedom of expression being important. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I honestly understand what Alice is saying. I, I don't want my eight year old daughter to go out of the house looking like anything but an eight year old, honestly. But, I mean, I just don't. She, if she wants to play like dress up or whatever in the house or put on makeup or whatever, like she can do whatever she wants. I mean, you're the one sitting here talking about the whole theater thing. Like, let her do it. That's fine. She's not going. I'm not taking her to IHOP in whatever you think is inappropriate that she's wearing. I mean, the stuff that she's going to school in is what she wears when she's with me. I just don't want. She's just. Yeah. It's not what I've heard. I know a lot of people. Yeah. So, feeling, is that Allison about feeling anxious about um, what other folks are saying around clothing and wanting to make sure that um, that you can feel uh, that, that you have trust around what's happening with clothing and it's consistent yeah. and wanting consistency around clothing between both households. Is that correct? Right. Um, and Trevor, um, wanting a, a clarity and, and understanding around what's happening mm -hmm. with clothing and, and it's not like you also feeling again misunderstood about how clothing was happening yeah. in your household is that true? I mean, she just doesn't get it so 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 is that a topic that you'd like to to work on immediately? yeah i yeah, mean definitely. i don't i don't think it is because there's not anything going on but i mean if it's going to help her to be able to talk about that yeah, so I if she if she can get some sort of understanding through talking about clothing then yeah what I'd like to. so so wanting to make sure that it's a topic you know when um, when we get to step four, we want to make sure that you have ideas that make sure that you're not feeling misrepresented right. anymore. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I see this thing on here. I mean, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But I see this thing on here about the spiritual guidance, which we haven't really talked about, but I think it's important. I mean, I have been when I do have the kids trying to take them to church and uh, raise them as good Christians. So and you know, she, like, for some reason, he's again, a, doesn't he's a like trust. Easter Christian. There's nothing wrong with that. That's all the kids are right now. And until you know they start going to church and doing all this stuff with both of us, then I mean not at the same time, a bit. But uh, but then that's the only way it's gonna happen. I mean, they're eight and ten. You know, they get excited about Easter Christmas, that's fine. So why And that's you weren't taking them when they were at your house on weekends. So I just think it too. I think I think faith is very important and I think it helps them grow up with, you know, morals and it gives them guidance and I, I just don't. I just don't think that you and Jenna are the best Christian. Yeah. See, it's always because Jenna's involved. With it. She just she doesn't trust anything. She's fine. Right. So, so let me see if I can understand this. You're self, You're both saying that the, the faith is important to you, and it's important to you to kind of communicate that to the children. If it weren't for my faith, I never would have gone through this whole thing. So he always just he just don't make fun of it. So so, so it sounds like you feel grateful about. Um, your faith and feeling grounded by it, yeah. okay. and grateful for how it's supporting you through this process. Right. And I want I want my kids to have that too. Yeah. I don't want them to be Bible thumpers though. Like I, I'm not taking it that far. Like that's what she wants. It seems like, but I mean, I don't mind taking them to church. So you talked about wanting unity um, in the message about faith to them, mm -hmm. um, and you talked about the consistency of the every Sunday. Yeah. Or regular, like sort of regularity to them, yeah. if you're saying every Sunday. If you're talking about more often. Yeah, yeah, every Sunday. Um, and then um, when you say Bible thumpers, can you help me understand what you mean by that? I mean, I just don't want them, like, going, being raised thinking that, you know, religion is everything and that, you know, some, you know, I, I just don't want that. Like, they, it's, don't yeah, I think people they. People think I'm some, like, fundamentalist, evangelical. You know, hey, I mean, that's, I mean, my God. Uh, that's fine. I mean, they, they, can, they can go to church once a week. I have no problem with that. But I don't want her, like, just cramming religion into their heads. I just don't think it's something that's appropriate right now. I or at all, honestly. Now more than ever, so. So, but, so I've heard you, you were, t um, just want to make sure that I understand. So you're saying that, um, 
you're worried that there could be sort of too much. Yeah. But I'm not sure I'm, I'm following. You're saying that the one day week feels good. And yeah. When we get to step four, um, you could talk about some of the specifics. <coughs> right now, I'm trying to understand what is it in terms of the goal that you have around spiritual guidance. Well, I think that is. I think it's important. Don't get me wrong. I, I think going to church once a week is fine and everything, but I just don't want it to like be in every aspect of their lives and they're like so involved in it that you know they lose sight of everything else. You know what I'm saying? I, I just don't. And I, I mean, I'm not some kind of fanatic. I'm not, it's not like I want them to go to church every day. So, so Trevor, is that about having balance um, with regard to, to church and, yeah. and, and um, again, around them being well-rounded? I mean, there has to be that balance about like, being kids and having uh, another life and then going to church. And, you know, they should know that that's important. They should be able to do it. They should be able to do it with me. You know, once a week if they can too, and, and not just her, but this, and there, yeah, there needs to be that balance between knowing that, but then also not like having that so much that that's all they that's all. They I just want to make sure that whether they're going to church with you or not, that Christian values should be modeled in your household. So it, it sounds like you're looking for um, that again. Faith is important, you and ha and having that integrated throughout their life is important. Exactly. It can't be something that they get exposed to once a week and that they hear these things and then the people they look up to, their parents and the people around them, aren't living aren't living that way. What do I do that makes you think? So again, have a consistency between right. the, the, the message and, and uh, yeah. the, their lives. And I'm, I'm not sure, Trevor, but it's not like you felt insulted. Yeah, I just don't, yeah, I don't understand why she... Or what it is that I do that I don't We were living together, we were not people. divorced, and you were sleeping with another woman. I mean, hello. It's and the way that woman dresses, the kids, I sure never even been in a church. So she she had you're the one who's saying that she shouldn't go to church with us. She was she had it and she did it one time. So yes, she does. If she walked church. in a church, God would probably strike her. It hasn't happened yet. So it sounds like you have some questions about um, Jenna's faith and her, her religion. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, and so as we go forward into step four, you'll have a chance to explore what you want to do about spiritual guidance. And so if part of that is finding out more about Jenna's faith, you'll have a chance to discuss that. I just um, want to make sure that gets covered. Yeah. As well. So um, as we post spiritual guidance, would it be fair to say you, you all would be, as you're going forward, you're looking for um, plans around spiritual guidance that meet your needs for um, involvement, you're involved in both of your involvements, so the, and, and then also balance. And you talked about the integration of faith into the daily life and consistency right. of the messages. Yeah. So, does that, that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep, spiritual guidance, something we can post. Is that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, all right, okay. This is getting put to yes, I apologize. Um, so you circled some stuff. Do you want to tell us what else you have, or I mean, should we keep, I, I had some notes from earlier about things that were important. Why meals and food? Okay. So what about food? What do you want to? What's uh, important to you? I just want to make sure that they're eating a healthy, balanced diet. Um, they're young. They're eight and ten. You know, like they're still growing. Um, if they don't get good nutrition now, it can really affect the way that they grow and how they are. And I just, I, I don't want them eating junk food. I don't want them coming home and being sick because they ate so much candy and crack while they were at his house. Yeah. I just, I just, just all these assumptions that you have. I don't understand. Like they went trick or treating. They had a couple pieces of candy. Piece of and we went to I. On their cell phone. That would be you. What? So, so making he's, sure. He's never to that. So having food happen in a way that that um, takes care of, of Roger and Nakia's physical health. Immediately and long term is something that you're looking. So yeah. the kinds of ideas you're looking for. And again, er, earlier I think I talked. You talked about feeling uh, villainized about what was happening with food, and so wanting mutual decision making that prioritizes their physical well being is important. Yeah, because I'm really tired of being the bad guy. I'm just sick of it. You know. It's like, oh, Dad will let's eat ice cream. Mom's gonna make us eat carrots. It's lame. Like. They didn't have ice cream. Like, yeah, God, of course. Oh my God. Raw carrots suck. I mean, that's a great. You don't need ranch. Good. I mean, 
Do you give a ranch at least? Yeah, let's take every vegetable and dip it in some sort of coagulated animal fat. That's fabulous. I mean, it matters. He doesn't even eat fruit. No. Fruit sucks. The kids can eat fruit, they love fruit. But, I mean, it Not that there's ever any fruit. I mean, they get yeah. strawberries. They yeah. get strawberries yeah. and blueberries yeah. on the pancakes when they go to IHOP. So, so it sounds like um, for you that an important piece of food um, is the enjoyment. I mean, you talked about yeah, it's fun, and you talked about what's tasty and enjoying food, and then you talked about sort of the social aspect of it. Earlier, you were talking about Character the social aspect of, it, of food as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. And she talks about she doesn't want to be blamed, but it's her own damn fault. I mean, they can come over and like. You know, eat, not eat whatever they want. It's not like I just spoon feed them junk, but I mean, like they have their freedom to eat the things that they want to eat to some extent. And then they get home and they just get like carrots and whatever other bullshit well, she feeds them. So no wonder they blame her. It sucks. I didn't have that. I mean, no one wants that. For kids. So it sounds like um, you talked earlier um, about feeling burdened around the food, and you're saying yeah. that, that a piece of it is still like to make up for um, nutrition that, that maybe they're not getting when they're yeah. Trevor, right? And, um, and Trevor, it sounds like you're saying um, that part of why the children maybe are excited when they're with you to eat um, some of the different foods is because of the um, specific foods that they're able to have when they're with Allison. Right. So, right. so there's this... I'm sorry, the okay. one thing I think I heard is like having, having Roger and Kay's input in what they eat was exactly. important to you. Like, I mean, I put some sort of control on it, like, I put, like, some sort of control on it, but I say, like, hey, guys, what do you, like, what do you want tonight? I mean, if they just say they want 30 packets of ketchup, no, that's not happening. This isn't Big Daddy, but, I mean, they're, they're at least getting something they want and something that's somewhat good for them, but then they go here, and she's like, you know, carrots and salad and all this shit, and she just gives it to them and doesn't give them any choices. They're kids. You can't let them pick what they want to eat. I mean, occasionally, sure, but you can't just give it to everything. So again, looking for balance between their input and um, and, and and nutrition. And what she means by occasionally is they can have like one Hershey kiss a month or something. So, yeah. so some of the specifics about you know how often organic chocolate. Just some of the specifics: organic chocolate, Hershey's kisses, whatever it might be. You'll you have a chance to explore those kinds of specifics in a few minutes when we get to step four. And right now we just as we're posting kind of creating this agenda, want to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So if you post meals and food. Um, it would be fair to say that going forward, you're, you're sort of working on how can you get a plan around that that meets your goals for the children to have fun and enjoyment and input into it, and your goals to have um, nutrition and, and um, focus on their physical well-being. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. so we also